a trampoline. So if I was to say to you folks what is the first game that you think of when I say western shooter, your brain quite rightly so would go straight to Red Dead Redemption, with maybe a couple of people even thinking Call of Juarez first. However for me the first game that I think about is the game that introduced me to the western world. I'm of course talking about today's grind, Gun. I remember playing Gun when I was a kid and absolutely loving it. Then upon learning that it had an Xbox 360 release and was one of the first games ever to include achievements, I knew the grind was inevitable. So it's time to trek back to the land of 2005 and to see if this game is as good as my brain remembers it to be and to get that 100% done. And for this one we have quite a lot to do, from completing the main campaign, all of the side missions a touch of collectibles, then having to complete the game three more times on three different difficulties. And also trust me when I say that the hardest difficulty in Sin is not a joke. We are in for a lot here folks, so I think it's best we crack straight on and get to grinding all 31 achievements. Also remember folks, if you do like the video and want more, please don't forget to subscribe. It's free and it turns out that a fair few of you watching these videos aren't subscribed. So I would horrendously appreciate it, as we are getting scarily close to 100,000 now. So thank you for that and welcome to the achievement grind. So considering the fact that I have to go through the game 4 times on all 4 difficulties, I thought it best to play on easiest for my first run. Then I can get a lay of the land as it were, and I can also get all of the side missions and whatnot done without any real stress. Anyway, the game begins with a cutscene. A group of soldiers are escorting a priest with a very shiny cross in his hands, before a storm then overtakes them. From the storm a horde of Native Americans emerge and slaughter everybody. With the priest dead last, we skip to 300 years later. We then play as Colton travelling to Missouri with his dad. Colt awakens for another one of our dad's signature hunting lessons, here we learn the basics of gunplay as well as see the very unfortunately ugly UI. Yeah, it hasn't aged well at all, but no matter, we have things to kill. We take care of birds, learn about the quick draw which allows us to slow down time for quick fire kills, and then we even go on to kill more wolves and elk. As I said, this section is to just get us used to the guns and whatnot, and surprisingly the shooting is fairly good in this game and holds up quite well, so much so that we are just cutting our way through the tutorial rather nicely. Now unfortunately the hunt does quickly go south as a bear decides to join the party and knock dear old dad down. We not liking that fact very much then riddle the bear with bullets and with it dead we save our dad and unlock our first achievement the hunt complete. And yeah the achievement names suck for this game but it's like one of the first ever games to implement them so I will give them the benefit of the doubt. We start to skin the bear as the skin will fetch a pretty penny, but right on cue the steamboat arrives that will take us straight to the title card. On the boat dad then takes a moment to talk to a young lady to peer in the contents of a safe, before a rather slick preacher comes to talk to us. This guy is indeed the freak that he appears to be and the vibe that we get from him is anything but immaculate. However, he soon goes on his way, I'm sure we won't be seeing that fella anytime soon. Moments later we see that fella again. He's demanding to know where something is from the woman that was talking to our dad, but a slap to the face seals a fate and her reward is a rather fashionable head axe. An army of men then open fire on the boat and trust me, turns out they are pretty decent with their shots. <laughs> But so are we, and we soon shoot our way back to dad and take a stand against these zombie looking invaders. We manage to hold them off well, however unfortunately the battle does get the better of the boat and we soon complete the mission and unlock the next achievement, Steamboat Massacre Complete. With things going wrong fast, dad thinks that this is the best time to say that this is it. The boat is going to blow so we need to take a token and find a prostitute in a city called Dodge called Jenny to carry something on before then dropping the bomb that this beautiful bearded bastard is not actually our dad. With that he pushes us off the boat and dies moments later as the ship explodes. But I don't know why he didn't just jump in the water with us, like that was a needless sacrifice, but feck it. The next shot shows the cover skull on a train, so you know that this is the bad guy express. The preacher reports that he wasn't able to get the item that they were looking for, and unfortunately it's going to be hard to hear his next orders as the boss goes to slice his lobes clean off. A homeless man then comes to inspect our body and when we awake he says that his name is Honest Tom. And honestly, I think we can trust this person, he's got kind eyes. Tom then tells us that we've been out cold for three days and we're seemingly the only survivor of the steamboat massacre. We say that we need a horse to travel to Dodge, so Tom says that we can win one off him if we're the sporting kind of bloke. He doesn't know how much of a sporting bloke we are though, so we hop on the horse and get ready to win it. 
Now this, surprisingly, is just a glorified horse tutorial. We learn the basics of galloping, jumping, and even using the horse to drive by, kill things. It's wonderful. And I also may be saying this a touch early, but the horses in this game are hilariously OP, and I'll get to why later on. Now, as you'd expect, we ace everything. But when we go to leave, Honest Tom turns out to be more of a lying bastard Tom. Unfortunately though, even with him and his goons, his recent horseplay made it an easy fight. And we soon put Honest Tom down in the honest dirt. Doing so, we also unlock our next achievement, Honest Tom Complete. With our new horse, it's time to trek to dodge. On the way, we also see some beautiful gold. However, since we don't have the right tools, the game just goes, how about no? So we eventually need to buy a pickaxe so that we can find all of these pieces for another achievement. Anyway, back to trekking. Now in my mind when I played this game I remembered a huge city with tons to do and tons to see, however when we arrived I was actually really shocked to see that Dodge is just a single street with a single building that you can walk into. Now of course I'm not complaining, it's a product of the time, however I was just more shocked to have been imagining something so much more. Memories are weird. Anyway, we stroll into town and the first thing that we see is a wanted poster. This is one of the many side tasks that we'll have to complete for money and stat upgrades. And for this we have to capture somebody and get $10 if we kill them, $15 if we capture them alive. So with the target in the bar across the street, we go to take them down. And it takes exactly about five seconds for us to bring this criminal to justice. With that done, we also see the next side task, poker games. Now I've been playing poker for many, many years now, so I was dead excited and surprised to see an actual poker tournament in the game. And it goes like anything else. But we have to win all of these poker tournaments as well for another achievement. So we quickly rid the other gits of their chips and carry back on. With those done for now, we find the shopkeeper and buy the pickaxe and some upgrades as well, as we need all of those for another achievement, before we then go to do the first Pony Express mission. These are basically time trials where you have to get something from point A to point B as fast as possible, and to be honest, the time that they give you is pretty brutal and doesn't give you as much time as you'd expect. However, we need to complete these as well. For now though, it's time to find Jenny. When we arrive in the saloon, we place the token on the counter and ask for Jenny. She comes over to inspect the coin. We say that we got it from my dad who was talking to Sadie, a friend of Jenny's. But before we can get into it properly, the men that she was talking to prior start to get angry that we're cutting the line, so to speak, as they just want to poke, they said. God, that's a gross way to put it. So it's time for a good old fashioned bar brawl. Ah, this truly is a western. But with Jenny being kidnapped, we sprint after her like an absolute hero. When we reach her, we rid the git who has her of brain, skull, and pretty much any other headly materials before Jenny then shows us in her trunk. We start poking around inside and find a picture of our dad as well as a new pistol to don and we're then told that Sadie went to a place called Empire City and our answers might be there. The building then gets molotov so we have some more idiots to rid of brains. They really took this personally and now they're actually trying to burn the building down. However, since this is the only liquor establishment, we protect it with every fibre of our being from the Red Hand Gang, even taking out their leader. A pretty interesting day for our first moment in Dodge but we also unlock the next achievement, the Red Hand Gang Complete, for shockingly completing the Red Hand Gang. Now at long last, the Sheriff finally arrives after things have settled, because of course he does, saying that he was busy protecting the people constructing the bridge as they keep getting attacked as well. But we can't deal with those kind of bridges right now as we have to deal with Jenny. We tell Jenny about the preacher and she knows him as Reverend Reed, that appeared in the city about a week ago looking for Sadie. So we decide to head to Empire with Jenny to talk to the Mayor Hoodoo Brown about this preacher. Before we can leave however, we need to get the bridge ready. We arrive to the Sheriff who says that we need to go through the construction site and to views the TNT on the bridge, as well as take care of the Apache folk trying to blow it up. Now I also need to say here that fighting the Apache in this game is quite weird and really not done the best. It's a bit of a cliche and they're the biggest stereotype that you could possibly imagine and they're not the only ones in this game as the Chinese people that are also building the bridge aren't really gracefully done either. We rid the bridge of enemies, defuse the TNT and get back to the top. There we have a short sequence where we have to protect the workers as they finish the bridge. With the queue that the enemies seem to be making though it's fairly easy to take them all out one by one. But with the last piece of the bridge in place, we need to defend it from a couple more Native Americans before dealing with the boss of the group, Quick Killer. He jumps into action to kill us, however thanks to Quick Draw and a Quick Knife, Quick Killer is quickly killed, and we unlock the next achievement, Quick Killer Complete. That was a lot of quick for one sense and sorry. With that though, the bridge is finished and we can now explore most of the world as much as we'd like. The first thing we do though is another type of side mission, where we help the sheriff with some keeping the peace, and 
normally keeping the peace involves us shooting a lot of people in the head. Fine by me. However, these are another group of challenges that we'll need to complete throughout the game for also more achievements. Now back with Jenny, we're ready to travel. Our job is now to protect the stagecoach as we travel to Empire. It's a fairly straightforward and easy task and it takes a couple of different stages to actually mix it up quite nicely, which I wasn't expecting. But nothing really to say here other than we killed everything in our way to get Jenny safely there. Five minutes later, the mission was complete and we unlocked stagecoach complete. Turns out this map is also not as big as I remember, but it's actually the perfect size for the game, so no complaints. Anyway, we roll into Empire and Hoodoo Brown greets us at the saloon. He takes care of Jenny and she introduces us. Since we escorted them safely, he is already in our favour. We're saying that we're looking for somebody and we'll go see him later out to sort this business, as he needs to go and sort some business out too first. This cutscene also ended in a really, really odd way. To hell with that line rag! Goddamn reprobates have no respect for law and order. Like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. For now, though, before that, it's back to the side quests. We complete wanted missions, mine gold, and that sort of thing. Whilst doing so, we also find a friendly Apache, who has some hunting missions for us. We need to go and find some special animals to hunt, but since we don't have a bow right now, we're not able to just yet, as apparently using guns is cheap and bows show true huntsmanship and skill, so we'll have to crack on with these later. We also do our first of the horse challenges. On the map is a ranch, and the gent who owns it needs help herding cattle and horse tasks such as that so we'll be doing these as well. Now, thanks to all of the side missions and gold that we'd already completed, we had quite a bit of money saved and our stats were nicely increased, so we're already in top shape to carry on with the campaign. So, back to Empire and who do we go? We then arrive in Hoodoo's office with his two deputies. Hoodoo asks about the preacher we're looking for and says that he's going to find out some more information about him, but as a favour for a favour, we are then immediately hired and promoted on the spot as part of his law gang, instantly, without a CV or an interview. God, job hunting used to be real easy back in the 1800s. And right on cliche cue, a man bursts into the room saying that a key player from a gang called the Resistance is in town and we need to go and get him. We head to the bar and when the locals realise that we're law, it's time for another fight. This one goes just like the first with the local street toughs getting ripped apart. When they die, the man in question arrives and after seeing the massacre, sprints away. Or horses away. We and the other two right hand men follow him to his hideout. We then kill them all with the power of horse and go to open the barn. Inside there are a couple scared out of their minds. As Colt was about to walk away, however, one of the deputies just cuts the couple down and frames them. It only took half a mission for these guys to out themselves as dirty. A new record if you ask me. Time to kill them, I guess. And I tell you what, they did a really good job in framing this poor woman. That is quite the pose. Now, with Mrs. Lee, the fight is quite tough, and both of these gits pack a punch. However, with quick draw, some impeccable aim and skill, we take them down and unlock the next achievement, Law and Order Complete. Time to go back to Hoodoo and question all of this. Back at the saloon, he greets us, saying that he hasn't a clue what's going on. All he knows is that he was coming to get us as the preacher is upstairs with Jenny. When we go up, he is telling the truth. However, Jenny unfortunately develops a rather unfortunate case of not breathing. Now, this is the only part of the game that I remembered from playing it as a kid, and it absolutely blew my mind when I first saw it. However, before Colt can take revenge, Hoodoo knocks us unconscious, and the man from the train joins the party, saying that we're going to die now, as we're going to be hanged for Jenny's murder. But this is a classic Western, so when we cut to a prison cell, we know that it's time to escape. The fellow in the cell with us says that he can take us to a secret compound and Serpy, the one across from us, says that he can teach us how to lockpick if we bust him out. With all of us in agreement, it also turns out that the one-eyed bastard is somebody called Magruder, and he is indeed the big boss. Now, the plan is simple. We grab the guard when he's close to the bars, but with no keys, we grab his badge to use that to jibby the door open. Surprisingly, it works wonderfully. Now it's time to get some horses together, then bust Serpy out and ride into the sunset together. And here we also find our first bow, which is a pretty decent stealth weapon that pretty much insta-kills if you aim it right. So we easily grab the three horses that we need without anybody noticing. We then steal some lovely explosive TNT and bust Serpy out. He joins us on the horses and the country roads take us home. Actually, they only take us a couple of minutes away before Serpy the lockpick leaves the group for his own endeavours. We follow Port back to his hideout with the rest of the resistance quite close to Empire and unlock the next achievement, Escape from Jail Complete. It's here when we then meet Claire. And after a brief misunderstanding about our loyalties, a picture of Ned, our dad, settles the score and we become friends. We talk to Clay again in the morning and decide to rob one of Magruder's trains that's carrying a Gatling gun on board. And we 
want that gun. So we go to part of the track with the idea to blow up some of the rocks and kill everybody that tries to stop us. We position the TNT barrels perfectly and when the train gets closer we destroy the mountain and halt the train. As you can expect there is quite a bit of firepower there so we have to deal with that next. But with our stats insanely high from all of the side missions and upgrades that we bought, we sent these people to the afterlife at record speed. Well, that and using the Gatling gun on board certainly helps. When we win, we unlock the next achievement as well, ambush the train complete. And it turns out that one of the carriages that they're carrying is a small group of Apache. When we set them free, the leader many wounds then threatens to kill us. But we, Colt, understand their language perfectly, and they take their men without further scuffle. Now you may be asking, how the hell does Colt know what he's saying? Well, allow me to show you the one and only reason that they give for this where did you learn apache i'm not sure it's like i could understand what he was saying but i couldn't quite speak it ah Amazing. Perfect writing. He just knows. Back at the hideout, we are then given some exposition during a party. Claire tells us the story of Magruder and how he knew Ned. It turns out that Magruder was Claire and Ned's commanding officers during the war. They were looking for somewhere called the Lost City, an ancient city filled with as much gold as a man could get their hands on. Magruder, Ned and Claire went to talk to somebody who apparently had been there, as they want to find the cross that we saw in the opening as that holds the key to finding the city. Whilst there though, an Apache threatens him and Magruder doesn't take it too well and kills them all after finding the cross in his house but an absolute legend shoots the cross into two pieces and takes his eye in a single shot absolute legend However, they all die rather quickly after that. Now, back at the camp, Clay says that Magruder still wants that city and will stop at nothing to get the cross. But before we can get further into it, though, apparently Magruder has finally found the camp and is about to attack it. So we need to kill all of his men and defend it. To be honest, it is fairly easy to do, thanks to a Gatling gun, a cannon, and a sniper rifle. We mulch all of the men and horses that tried to take us, but we won't be taken easily. Well, except for Clay. He gets taken during the scuffle. But we unlock the next achievement, defend the hideout complete. With Clay taken and our base, sus we need to act right now or we will lose the following day it's time to attack and get clear back as well as you know killing hoodoo time to head to empire with port to start this war now apparently hoodoo has clear hidden in an underground tunnel system under the laundry building so we need to sneak in there as port storms the saloon now you may be wondering how exactly we could win this and have enough firepower to overthrow hoodoo well simple and cannon. We start by protecting the men carting it to the saloon and wave after wave of Hoodoo's men fall at the hand of my gun. With the cannon finally in place it's time to sneak into the laundrette for Clay. We hollow it out of its residence rather quickly and blow up a wall revealing a tunnel. At the top we see that Clay is receiving some treatment that most would call unpleasant so we decide to save him quicker as we remove the torturers from the equation. With Clay now safe it's time to kill Hoodoo. We climb to the top of the saloon to fight him. Many dynamite explosions and bullet holes later Hoodoo retreats to his office and we chase suit, carving our way through more of his men. At long last, the first dose of revenge is here. As we arrive into his office with Sam B and the thing that go bump in the night, he screams, I'm hoodoo you voodoo bitch, and we just shoot him out the window, before posing his body in a rather hilariously manner, for all to enjoy. With hoodoo out of the way though, we unlock take down hoodoo complete, and now it's time to find Soapy and to get into the safe that was on the steamboat. As if Magruder wants the contents for himself, that means that we want it more. Back in Dodge Denton, the sheriff is tied up with some problems, and Soapy is actually here as well. However, he's moments away from execution after he shuffled cards in a rather lackluster manner. Time to save him again. To be honest, it's a fairly easy save. We shoot his noose and the nasty pasty bastards that tried to kill him after. It then gets a little bit much and a lot of people turn up, so we take the ferry back across the pond and go to find the safe on the wreckage of the ship. Once on the other side of the river, we also unlock save Soapy complete. We then see Magruder, very angry that he lost Empire. Now knowing that we're after the safe, he sends Reed to help in the efforts to stop us, just like we wanted. But but for now, we just need to sneak into a high vantage spot to be able to see it all, as the crew that attacked the steamboat are living very close. Turns out a lot closer than we realised though, when one finds us and sticks a gun to soap his hollow brain. A man then walks up to us saying that we're looking for trouble and we are now his steamed guests. This is Sergeant Hollister and he is the man in charge of the gang that attacked the boat. And since he is a rather tall gentleman, we oblige and become his prisoner. And since he has our dad's rifle, we decide to add this gent to the list as well. The rifle and the steamboat massacre that is. We then spot that the preacher has arrived, so we need to hurry. The way we break out of this place is rather simple. Around us are three Native Americans getting beaten on. We save them from their beating and as a lovely little group go to escape. For for this we just follow the guide of the Apache and quickly sneak around the complex and escape through a rubbish chute. We carry on until we're home free and head back to the village with the other Native Americans. When we arrive they too are under attack by Hollister's men, but thanks to the horse we quickly pace them into the ground and unlock our next achievement, Hollister's Fort Complete. The leader of
of the tribe fights at dawn says that they no longer have the strength to win, so Colt say let's just take the fight to them once again and claim the fort. In the next shot, that's exactly what we're doing. We sprint past the cannon fire, through the canoe sequence, and sneak through the mountain to take the cannon Gatling gun uses by surprise. And it works. Even though we are now shirtless for some reason, we smash our way through their defences and one by one take out the cannons, and well, anything else that this fort seems to be using against us. With one final cannon destroyed, we unlock the next achievement, attack the fort complete. At the top, we once again talk to fights at dawn, who thanks us, but says that Hollister escaped, so we need to now go and find him and kill him so that he never returns. We then then find him on a nearby beach, and even though he is screaming many words about how we're going to die, he fails to take into consideration our gun, and we use said guns to line his lungs with lead. When we do enough damage to his exterior, he runs away, but Hollister's got one more party trick up his sleeve, to sprint to us and blow himself up like oh so many party animals. But with that, Hollister is dead and we take our dad's, or Ned's since remember he isn't our dad's, rifle back. Fights at dawn comes and says that we have done our dad proud before we get soapy and decide it's finally time to crack the safe. When we go to do so, once again however, we get ambushed by Magruder's men. However, they are much stronger than those that came before, but we do kill them without any real issues. Time for the safe. Soapy cracks it open in seconds and inside is one of two golden cross pieces. Now that we've got it though, Reed makes his appearance saying, to have very much. So we close the safe again and go to send this preacher to heaven. Because I'm playing on easy however, and I've got the best aim in the west, Reed was also quickly taken down. When his health is depleted, we unlock the next achievement battle at the steamboat complete as well, and it's time to end this preacher once and for all. He begs for his worthless life, so instead we shoot him in the head. Ah, wonderful. We reopen the safe and take the piece of the cross, before realising that we know where the other piece is. The Apache chief has it as a weapon, so we set off to get it. Magruder then finds out about the preacher's death, as well as us grabbing that cross. He isn't too happy about this, but more on that later. Now at this point we're getting through the campaign at a lovely pace, and after completing the last mission we could now finish more or less every single side mission before carrying on, so we decided to deal with all of these first. Now I am going to go through them fairly quickly as there isn't too much to talk about, so we started by completing every bounty mission. The final had us fight with somebody on a ledge and when we knock him out and take him alive we unlock the achievement Bounty Hunter. Next we won every single poker tournament in the game, there were only 6 but they were a lot of fun to go through as I said, so when we ridded the last opponent of his remaining chips we unlocked Card Shark. After that it was time to finish all of the Keeping the Peace missions that we get from the Deputy Sheriffs at Dodge and Empire. It ends with us shooting two women in the face and we're rewarded with the next achievement, Keeper of the Peace. Now the next, I have to admit, I messed up. This is the first time that it has ever happened and I'm sure it was inevitable at some point, however I don't have the footage for the next achievement, we just had to get every upgrade in the game. So I can't show you the achievement pop up, however here is the screen showing that I have every upgrade as well as the achievement unlocked here as well, I am sorry about that. But with that we unlock every every upgrade collected. We're not done yet though folks, since we had unlocked a couple of good bows from the previous missions it's time to go on the hunt. These are quite simple though, as all you have to do is horse around until you find the rare animal, then shoot it dead with your bow. Super simple. And there aren't actually that many hunting missions in the game to be fair, so when we find the last bear that we need we strike it down. We did so well in fact that the man giving us the mission replicates himself to give us our next achievement, the greatest hunter. Almost done now folks, only three more to go for this section. The next we got was for finding and mining every gold spot in the game. Now honestly we'd already found like 90% of them just by going through the game or exploring a little bit, so this didn't take anywhere near as long as you might think. We find the last one hiding in the water, mind it, and unlock Professional Prospector. The next achievement that we get is for completing all of the Pony Express missions in the game. Now the final one was the hardest as it involved speeding through five different points and people, however we did it absolutely fine and unlocked the achievement Professional Postman. Only one more side mission category left to go now folks, and it involves the horses once more. We just have to complete all of the horse challenges in the game. Again, they're one of the simpler types of missions, and there isn't actually that many, so we rode one final time with the ranch owner and unlocked the last achievement, the Unrivaled Horseman. With that, we only have to deal with the campaign and we're done. Time to find many wounds and complete the game. Back at the Apache camp, we spot him rather quickly. He asks us why we're here, but before we can even mention that we need his weapon, he decides to give us a backstory. Now, originally when Magruder shot the doctor with Ned and Clay, it turns out that we were actually there as well, as a child of the Apache. We hid behind the world's smallest pebble as the carnage happened and when it was over it was only us and another tribe member left. Ned then comes over and apologises for bringing this death upon the entire tribe. 
This kid is then like, all right, well then raise the baby and we're even for some bizarre goddamn reason. But hey, a plot twist is a plot twist. Colt is Apache, but with that many wounds breaks his weapon and the cross is complete. Written on it in Latin is a message that tells us to get to the highest point of the map. Since the map isn't that big, we already know exactly where that is and head straight there. At the top of the mountain, we find a point to bury the cross and our next achievement across the Badlands complete. The cross then reveals that the lost city of gold isn't underground like everybody's been thinking that it is. It's actually above ground hidden inside the rock. Somehow Magruder's men also see us and Soapy is knocked down the mountain when they shoot at us and taken by Magruder's right hand man. We shoot our way down the mountain, but we see that since Soapy has lost some of his pick locking fingies, he gives the location up instantly to Magruder and gets thrown out the train. We then find him, get him to safety, but it was all a trap. And now the train is back to kill us and end this. Once again though, they do not realize who they are messing with. So we oh so quickly kill all of his men as well as Dutchie himself. And unfortunately for Magruder, his train is now ours as well. And speaking of ours now, so it's the next achievement, escape the ambush complete. We are now on the final mission in the game, time to kill Magruder and find the city of gold for ourselves. The mission starts with us taking Magruder's train with Clay and using it to break through the entrance of the mine. We hop on a cannon that's been moved by Clay and begin to shoot our way through bit by bit, from taking out artillery and Gatling guns to inside the mine shooting TNT barrels and, well, men. Now surprisingly there isn't much to say here folks, it's just us working our way throughout the mine and the final task is to protect the men as they spin a turntable so we can push the cannon to the final obstacle and blast right through it. We smash it open but the fighting has now taken its toll and the mountain starts to cave in on itself. Clay and his men decide to leave however Colt isn't done, so we go through to find Magruder and when we find him, he has found it. His entire life's work in the moment is realised and we both stand in a room with a rather nice amount of gold inside. A fight then breaks out of course as you would expect but there is a problem. Magruder's armour is completely bulletproof, so instead we must ignite these geysers as he walks over them to burn him to death. A little tricky but a welcome challenge to end on actually. It takes a couple of tries to be honest but we eventually get the better of him and Magruder then runs into a hole in the wall for safety. This is where he unfortunately left his brain cells behind however, as his plan of attack is to just throw a bunch of dynamite at us. However since we have quick draw it barely leaves his hands before we explode it. In fact we shoot the TNT so often that the roof caves in above him and Magruder goes down. We see a huge rock crush him and we complete the next achievement Magruder's mind complete as well as easy difficulty complete for finishing the game. In the last cutscene, we are then shown Magruder stuck under a pebble, not the hulking rock that we saw squash him. However, we're thankful for this as we now get to escape and watch him get crushed once more in the room that he spent his entire life trying to find. In fact, the cave-in is so massive we almost don't make it ourselves, and only thanks to many wounds we are now able to make it out alive. We exit the mine just in time and watch as it crumbles into itself. With that, the camera pans away and the game is complete. When we get past the credits, we unlock our final weapon and our next achievement for unlocking all weapons, earning us the insanely named Every Weapon Collected. With that, we only have three more achievements left, to complete the game on normal, hard and insane. Now my thinking was that I wanted the challenge now, and also wanted to get insane out of the way with so that I could then speedrun the other two later. Now this is where the pain started, bear in mind I'm not going to go through the entire game again of course, but oh my god in heaven, insane difficulty is truly no joke and absolutely broke me. This game is horrendously brutal and broken on this difficulty, the enemies can kill you in two shots maximum, they have the eyes of a hawk after several years of laser eye surgery and they do not go down easily. The steamboat mission alone gave me a little taste of what was to come, but the first mission that truly gave me agony was the mission to save Jenny at the saloon. You poke out of cover for a second too long and you're dead. With slow reload times, weak weapons and no health, this mission absolutely sucked. But I didn't even know at this point, the pain truly hadn't even begun yet. I forced my way through the first couple of missions with difficulty, however the mission in which you have to kill Hoodoo's two deputies was my first true taste on this hell, as a single bullet would kill me and I have to take out two bosses. Now, remember earlier when I said that horses were the most OP thing in the game? As when you're on a horse, you don't take damage, the horse does. So, as long as you keep the horse alive, you can take as many shots as it can handle. And considering that even on this difficulty, horses take about 7-8 to eight shots to put down, it basically gives you many, many more chances to live. And if it wasn't for the horses in this game, I don't think I'd have finished it. They came in clutch in so, so many missions and moments, just allowing me to take another couple of bullets or to get out of there as fast as I can. And 
thanks to these magnificent steeds we somehow made it to the final mission of the game, and was ready for this to be ended and forgotten about as the path to get here was a pure misery. However, unfortunately the last mission on Insane is one of the most brutal challenges that I've ever had to do for the channel yet, I swear to god. Let me just give you a simple clip of the moment that it broke me. After all, I was on this 30 second segment for about 5 or 6 hours. What? I'm done. I'm done. Oh, I'm done. I, um, hmm. After that moment, I didn't come back to the game for nearly a week, but I could not let this be the game to beat me. A game hasn't beaten me yet, and if I can do Mirror's Edge, I can do this. So I booted Gun Up once again and got to work. Now, thanks to a break and my new lovely calm demeanor, I took my time, played better, and was thankfully able to very slowly start working my way through each section. It took me many, many deaths, but with each checkpoint, my hope was renewed. After about another 3 or 4 hours, I had finally made my way back to Magruder. Honestly, Magruder this time was much easier. The first section you don't even really have to be in his line of sight to do damage, so his attacks did nothing, and when he ran up to the platform we just quick fired his dynamite, and with that the game was complete on the hardest difficulty, and we unlocked the achievement Insane Difficulty Complete. Honestly, easily one of my proudest achievements in the list now for sure. As you can tell, I was rather chuffed. That's it, that's it, that's it, we've done it, we've done it, oh, we've done it, insane difficulty complete, oh, thank you, oh, we did it, oh, my lord, thank god we did it. Now we only have to beat the entire game twice again, but thankfully we sped through the last two difficulties rather quickly, with hard next and then normal. The game was also getting easier, so I could be more balls to the walls, and in turn get it done much faster. So with nothing else to really mention, we completed the entire game again on hard for hard difficulty complete, and finally the last achievement by completing it all again on normal difficulty for normal difficulty complete as well. Now I also do need to mention that some of you will no doubt know that this game's difficulty achievements can be cheesed by changing the options at the last second more or less, so you can unlock any of the difficulty achievements without having to go through any of the pain that it takes, and you don't have to go through the game four times either. However, I won't ever be doing that on this channel. Achievements not stacking sucks, but it is a product of the time and I'm not going to cheese achievements like that when I haven't earned them. So just to let you folks know if some of you are wondering why I didn't just cheese it, I hate cheesing difficulty related achievements and I won't ever do it. But with that, we have finally conquered the realm of gun and the old western shooter that put this style of game on the map for me has been grinded. But was the game as good as I remember it being when I was a wee nipper? Well it's time to talk about that as for now, the grind is over. Now gun. I didn't remember much of Gun beforehand other than Jenny's death and a couple of places and none of it looked how I remembered, but honestly I was still very impressed with the game. Other than some weird enemy choices and story moments, I loved going through this and was quite shocked on how much there was to do in a game that came back out in 2005. It's quite diverse and honestly if it wasn't for this game we wouldn't have the western games like Red Dead that we do now. And yes I am aware that Red Dead Revolver came out a year before this, however it played totally different. The story was linear whereas Gun is open world and filled with things to do, so it was lovely to go through again. Honestly, I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did, and the game is certainly an underrated classic that deserves some love, so I implore you, if you've never played this or used to play it when you was a kid, go back and play this game again. I guarantee you that you'll have a good time, even though now it's nearly 20 years old. Insane difficulty aside of course, that's just a bastard. But let's get to the stats. For Gun, it took us 34 hours to gain all 31 achievements that the game has to offer. For the rating of this game I'm going to be giving it a very well earned 7.5 out of 10. It has some things that haven't aged well at all and the UI stinks by today's standards, but the game is genuinely a treat to go through and pioneered a lot of what we have today, so to give it anything lower would do it a disservice. For difficulty of the achievements though I am also going to be giving it a 7.5 out of 10. Not only is going through the entire game 4 times a ball ache, but insane difficulty alone will be where many get tripped up, as it's true to his name and this is probably one of the hardest games that I've done for the channel yet. 
which I wasn't expecting when I booted it up. And of course, the hardest achievement in this game is going to be insane difficulty complete. However, for now, folks, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed Gun. And if so, don't forget to subscribe as next week we are once again covering a very difficult classic. Like Gun, when I was a young achievement hunting lad, there was one game that I couldn't win that beat me mercilessly. And next week, we're going to go back to that game. And for those of you who are familiar with this, you'll know my pain. Next week is the impossible journey of completing every level in the impossible game. So make sure you subscribe and come back next week to watch me suffer. Also, whilst you're at it, folks, why not swing by my Twitch as well, where we go for the Achievement Grinds live, covering all of the very best games out there, and don't worry, the very worst as well, but it would be lovely to see you. Also, need to once again thank my amazing patrons for the continued support. You are all amazing, and I cannot thank you enough for the extra support. It really means a lot and helps me make the best content that I can for you, folks. But that's it from me, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you all next week. Take care, folks. Bye-bye for now.